Right now, Stella and Boo are completely calm. They could care less about these kittens, and if the kittens go near them, they let the kittens know that if the kittens try to mess with either of them, they're gonna have hell to pay. Like, they're like, don't mess with me or I'll mess you up. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It is 10.20 a.m. And it's been a very eventful morning here. And I want to document what's going on here. And this is Splash. He's under the bed. Um, so for the past few nights, the cats were separated at night. The kittens were downstairs and the big cats were upstairs. And that was great. And then around 6 o'clock in the morning, they would bang on the door that they want to come up. I'd let them up. Everything was fine. Last night... I could not get all of the cats downstairs. I was able to get some of the cats downstairs and I could not get the rest of the cats downstairs. So I was like, okay, well, we'll just keep the rest of the cats upstairs. So what happened this morning was, this is an extra litter box that I have in the corner of my bedroom. I've had it in the corner of the bedroom for years now and it's really only in use if I have to isolate a cat in this room for whatever reason you know it's the it's here for emergencies if they need to use it however since the kittens have been inside they use it because they think it's just like a normal litter box and Splash has been using it because Splash has been having litter box issues you know either he has a UTI or he is you know, stress peeing, which is what Boo did. And Splash was doing it for a few days, and then he stopped doing it, and then he started doing it again yesterday. And what happened this morning was, um, Splash was fine all night. He was sleeping fine all night, and then he got up, and then this morning he went to use this litter box, and when he uses it, he sits in it for quite a while. Then he makes like a little marble-sized pee clump. Then he comes out and you know, just goes about his day for a while until he goes to another litter box to do the same thing. So what happened this morning was he came out of this litter box and Ringo was in the room and Ringo decided to chase him. After Splash got out of the litter box, Ringo chased him out of the room, which caused Splash a lot of stress. And here's Boo. Boo's fine. And here's Stella. Stella's fine. You know, she wasn't feeling good for a few days because of the dewormer, but other than that, she's fine. So these two are fine. Now, at some point this morning, I don't know exactly who or when, but someone chased Simba because I know what his scream sounds like. And here he is. He was underneath the kitchen table, but now he's drinking some water, which is good. So... Hey Boo. This is the pillow that I have on the living room sofa that Boo loves to lay on. Actually, all the cats really love laying on this pillow. They think it's like a cat bed. So I walked into the room and I saw Splash sitting on this pillow in the same exact position that he sits in the litter box. And I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what is he doing? Is he peeing on the pillow? And he, the way he sat here, just like upright and very still made me think yeah he's probably peeing on the pillow so after he moved I looked and sure enough up here on the pillow um, is like a quarter size wet spot and I was like he peed on the pillow so you know it, it's the middle of my morning I'm trying to get ready for my day I'm trying to juggle a whole bunch of stuff so I was like okay I'll deal with that I wanted to keep the pillow here because if he did it again, I did not want him peeing on the actual sofa cushion. I said, let him pee on the pillow. He already peed on the pillow. If he pees, if he pees on it again, fine. Well, he did. The next time I walked into the room, he was sitting on the pillow again and he peed on it again. At which point I remembered that I have these training pads downstairs. So I took out a training pad and I stuck it on the pillow. Now he has not gone back on the pillow since I put the training pad on. I was able to get him into my room and I have him isolated in my room. So he's going to spend the day in my room by himself. I'm going to give him, you know, UTI treatment in his food. I have some cranberry powder that I'm going to put in his food. I have some herbs for kidney and bladder that I'm going to put in his food. I'm going to also try to sneak in a few drops of apple cider vinegar. That should help. That's what I did a few days ago when everything seemed to pass and be fine. So if it is a UTI, He's going to get that for the UTI. If it's only stress, he's going to stay in the room because that should help him relax. Now, the cats have had cat grass here, and someone did vomit up a few pieces of cat grass. I think it was Splash, because at one point, 
the splash came over here to the rug and he started vomiting. Now, all he vomited up was some white foam and liquid from his stomach because they haven't eaten anything today. Um, they had dinner yesterday, so um, he was vomiting here. And like I said, he vomited up a few pieces of the cat grass, so it could be that... Um, you know, eating the cat grass caused him to vomit because sometimes that does happen with cats or it could be stress vomiting, which is what I think it was because here's Simba right now. He's in this cat tower, but before when he was under the kitchen table, he vomited the same exact thing under the kitchen table, just some white foam and some liquid from his stomach again, because the cats have not eaten their breakfast yet. And I know that was stress vomiting because prior to that, he had been growling and hissing at some of the cats that were in the room, specifically Nancy. So Nancy was in the room, and she's the one that's been chasing the cats around. So Simba got stressed out about it, and then he vomited. So what's going on with the kittens right now is Richard and Ringo are in this room, and I have the door shut. I put a gate in the door. Hey, Richard. And I was not able to get them downstairs. All the other kittens are downstairs. So... It's pretty much the five girls are downstairs, the two boys are up here, and it really is um, Nancy who's the main problem because she's been really chasing and attacking the cats. Um, I was surprised that Ringo chased Splash this morning. So Ringo and Richard would be secondary problems because, you know, Richard jumped on Stella the other day. So this is obviously not good. Splash should not be stressed out in his own home. Simba should not be stressed out in his own home. So if this continues, it'll be a situation where I definitely have to rehome these cats um, because this is not good. I can't have Splash and Simba living like this. It's not good at all. We have to remember that when Boo was integrated with the other cats after he had been separated from them for like many months, like the cats came inside in the end of December, early January of 2017, and Boo did not come inside until September of 2017. And even then he had to be quarantined away from the other cats for about 90 days. So it was practically a full year that Boo spent away from them. And then when he was integrated back into their group, he was jumping on them. That was the behavior um, that was the biggest problem that I would try to put him together with the other cats and he would want to jump on them, which is exactly, exactly what Nancy and uh, Richard have been doing. I have not witnessed um, Ringo jumping on any of the cats. Ringo's underneath the day sofa right now. Um, I've witnessed Ringo chasing, like Ringo chased Splash this morning. I haven't seen him jump on him. Uh, Nancy has jumped on them and Richard has jumped on them which is the same exact behavior that Boo had. Now, in order to get Boo to stop doing that, I had to put a harness on him. I had to put a harness and a leash on him. And I still have the harness and leashes in this house. I just have to find them and locate them because there's cat supplies everywhere. So if I have to do that with Nancy, I can do that with her. And if I have to do that with Richard, I mean, really the big problem has been Nancy. And then today with Ringo chasing Splash, that was pretty much unexpected. So I don't know if Ringo's trying to uh, lay ownership to uh, my bedroom because Ringo really likes laying on the cat tower there and everything. So where it stands today is we're going back to separation and Splash is going to spend the day in my room. Uh, the kittens are going to be downstairs and then these two are going to be in here. If I could get these two downstairs, uh, I would do that too, but... Um, I mean, I could pick up Richard for a few seconds at a time. Maybe if I picked him up and, you know, ran to the uh, downstairs um, staircase, I could dump him there. But it's, you know, it's hard for me to pick him up. And also with Ringo, I mean, I don't know, maybe I would be able to put a carrier in the room, somehow get him into a carrier and then take him down that way. But for now, they're going to be in this room. We'll see how it goes. And the kittens are going to be downstairs. And then Stella Boo and Simba will be in the rest of the house, which is basically the um, the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen. And then they'll have access to that litter box. So, I don't need this today. Today, I need to get a lot of stuff done. I'm supposed to be in the 50s, so I want to actually take all the litter boxes outside and scrub them down and replace all the litter. 
which is being very sweet right now. The other thing I should mention with regards to Splash and Simba is that we have to remember that when Boo and Stella were living outside, I always saw the two of them together and they were fending for themselves. They had to hunt their own food and if there were any fights or anything, they had to deal with the fights. Like it was the two of them against the world, right Boo? And so that was their situation. They were survivors. And when we look at these kittens, it was the seven of them against the world. So it was like seven siblings and they had to hunt to survive. And if there were any fights or anything, you know, they got into the fights. They had to basically do whatever they needed to do to survive outside. If we look at Splash and Simba, Splash and Simba did not have that experience. Splash and Simba did not have to worry about hunting food because I was the one feeding them pretty much from the minute they could walk. From the first time Stella showed them to me, they were getting fed every single day that I saw them. Also, they never had to worry about fighting for survival because they always had Stella and Boo to protect them. And I know it was Boo because Boo used to eat dinner with them. And when Stella used to come around by herself, if she was like looking for food or something, and I would go and I would peek under the fence to where the kittens used to be, I used to see Boo with the kittens. So Boo was like Stella's babysitter. That's why Boo gets very upset to this day when he hears kittens crying. He's very concerned. Even now, he hears some meowing in the room from Richard, and he's a little bit concerned about that. So that is the big difference between Stella, Boo, and all the kittens. They've all had to survive on their own. They've all had to, you know, fight and hunt and Splash and Simba have not had to do that. So they're going to be more stressed out and they are going to handle things differently than Stella and Boo. Right now, Stella and Boo are completely calm. They could care less about these kittens. And if the kittens go near them, they let the kittens know that if the kittens try to mess with either of them, they're going to have hell to pay. Like, they're like, don't mess with me or I'll mess you up. That's the attitude that Stella and Boo have with the kittens. So these two are fine. The other two have not had the same life experiences. So the other two are feeling a lot more stressed because they're feeling more threatened. Because like I explained, they've never had to survive on their own. They don't have the same toughness that Stella and Boo have and that the kittens have. It's 11.05 a.m. Splash is in the penthouse and he ate all of his breakfast. So he got some of the bladder tincture. He also got some dried cranberry. And then after he ate all his breakfast, I gave him a squeeze up with some drops of CBD oil on it. So that should help relax him. It also acts as an anti-spasmodic. So it'll stop like his bladder from spasming, which will make him feel like he has to pee all the time. So hopefully he'll relax comfortably here in the penthouse and it'll be a good day. I mean, I just want him to relax today. He's just been all stressed out, poor splashy. It's 11.25 a.m. and now there's been a change of plans. That was Stella. This is Simba. That's Boo. And they're all in the room with Splash. And I just sprayed the room down with the Pet Remedy spray. So it's nice and relaxing in here. The window's open a little tiny bit. I have the harp music on for the cats and they're gonna relax in here and this is what they wanted. I'll let the other cats up and it, it'll just give me more access to all the litter boxes that I need to bring in and out and like all the vacuuming and cleaning that I need to do today. Um, my entire morning has just been like shot because I've got nothing done but deal with cats. So that's what today is all about, I guess. So it's almost 10 p.m. and I'm coming downstairs to play with the kittens. They're practically cats. I mean, they're they're officially a year old. I'm going to say that because I estimated their month of birth to be March and it's March now. So that would mean they're a year old. And we got to figure out what we're going to do for their one year old birthday. So tonight they've been down here for the past several hours. And what I did was I put some Lucky Feral videos on the TV for them. And it seems to be keeping them calm because they've been nice and calm. I've been down here twice because I'm doing laundry. And they've all just been relaxing. They have not 
been trying to break the doors down and get upstairs and there's toys all over the place and I came down to play with some wand toys and I gave them um, so they had canned food for dinner and they ate most of it so then I gave them another can or two as a snack and I was just reading a book about cats and it's a really 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 good book it's one of the best books that I've read in a while with regards to cats and um, it explains um, specifically the effect that dry food has on cats and um, the amount of carbs in the dry food even if you think it has low carbs when you actually do the math uh, they're not low carb and um, it equates them with like human junk food and you know like processed cereals and uh, snack foods and I'm like if I don't eat that stuff why would I want to feed that stuff to my cats because that's what you know commercial dry food is really the equivalent of so um, it really has me rethinking the amount of crunchies that I give the cats um, even though I only put a few tablespoons of crunchies on the platters for them to share with their meal I'm really thinking of even cutting back on that with the kittens I don't think it's gonna be an issue with the bigger cats if I take away all of their crunchies then I think it will definitely be an issue because you know they're kind of addicted and that's what the book talks about the the book talks about dry cat food addiction and um, stuff like that so hello Eva 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 hisses at me more than any of the others hello Richard so right now it is one of the older videos where Hydrox was outside Hydrox looking really good in the video and I think it's a combination of my voice keeping them calmer and also seeing the other cats on the on the video I think I think both of those is helping and maybe it'll help these cats get along better with the other cats because I honestly think the wheel training video helps me get Sammy and even potentially Richard on that wheel so maybe these cat videos will help them uh, get along better with the other cats and me also it's 11 25 p.m. here's boo he's in his room it's dark in here but he's laying on the day sofa boo you don't have to get up okay you could just relax you can relax boo okay you relax go back on your day sofa Here's Stella, she's laying in the cat tower. Here's Simba, he's on top of the sofa cushion. How you doing Simba? Good night. And here's Splash, he's hanging out in this cat tower. So he's been in this cat tower for over an hour now, which is good because it means he hasn't been running to litter boxes every few minutes. And he's just hanging out here. Hey Splashy. So I had a whole bunch of playtime downstairs with the kittens and I'm coming up and just uh, walking around the house, picking up some stuff, cleaning up some stuff, and then I'm going to bed too. Okay, good night, Splashy. I hope you're feeling a little bit better, okay? watching this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.